dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Cassidy Strickland. Happy Friday to you. Your time is now 531. Let's go ahead and check in with Brandon Robinson for a first look at our forecast on this Friday morning. And Brandon, I know a lot of people's attention is on the rest of this weekend, but let's mm -hmm. focus on today. Yesterday morning turned out to be a little bit messy as the day went on. So mm -hmm. is today going to be a lot more calm? Yes and no. I think we're going to see the big issue this morning being fog, and it's kind of widespread across the area and dense too, but the moisture has switched over from drizzle or from full on rain to drizzle and then some fog. So not as bad in that respect this morning. It all depends on how you look at it. Let's go over to the graphics, start on the 119 camera up on top of uh, Pine Mountain, Whitesburg Mountain there, and uh, pretty quiet this morning. Just some fog up there. It's fog in the valleys, fog on the higher elevations as well. Less than a mile visibility at Logan and Wise, one mile at Harlan and Williamsburg. We are also looking at visibility down to two miles in Pikeville, one mile at, uh, excuse me, four miles there in Jacksboro. So just be careful as you head out the door this morning. Looking at the satellite and radar again, maybe just a little bit of drizzle, no major issues in play for us as we go through the first part of your day on this Friday. Temperatures fairly mild considering where they have been the last few days. 39 in Middlesbrough, 37 in Harlan, and 36 in Wise. Everybody else for the most part in the 40s this morning. Actually, just seeing now, there is a dense fog advisory. It was just issued. Just got a text on that. Uh, going till 10 o'clock this morning for parts of East Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. We'll have that map up for you here in a little bit. Temperature change went up several degrees since this time yesterday morning. So the forecast, not going to move a whole lot under mostly cloudy skies. We will see temperatures there in the low 40s for daytime highs. I'll have the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Cass. All right, we'll check back in with you. Thank you, Brandon. Well, leading our 5.30 half hour, two days after ISIS claimed responsibility for a suicide bombing in Syria that killed four Americans and at least a dozen Syrians, President Trump has shown no signs of rethinking his decision to withdraw U.S. troops. The president vi visited the Pentagon yesterday to discuss the U.S. missile defense policy. While there, the president weighed in on the suicide bombing in Syria. These are great people great, great people. We will never forget their noble and immortal sacrifice. The White House released a statement expressing its deepest sympathies to the families of the Americans killed. There are approximately 2,000 U.S. troops currently in Syria. Republicans in the House of Representatives have joined Democrats in symbolically rebuking President Trump on Russia. At issue is a plan by Trump's Treasury Department to lift sanctions on companies tied to a Russian oligarch and Kremlin ally. The House passed a resolution against lifting those sanctions yesterday. The vote tally included a majority of Republicans. And President Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen, admitted to rigging an online poll in the lead up to the 2016 presidential campaign. He said in a tweet, quote, what I did was at the direction of and for the sole benefit of the president. I truly regret my blind loyalty to a man who doesn't deserve it, end quote. Cohen is scheduled to testify on Capitol Hill next month regarding his role in the Trump campaign. It will be in an open hearing before the Democrat-led House Oversight Committee. March for Life will hold its annual event in Washington, D.C. today. Organizers with the pro-life group say their goal is to end the human rights abuse of abortion. Vice President Mike Pence will address the Rose Dinner. Others who are appearing include Republican Senator Steve Daines and Democratic Congressman Dan Lipinski. Well, the historically long shutdown is creating a remarkable back and forth between the president and the Speaker of the House. A day after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi threatened to derail the State of the Union, President Trump came back with his own power play, postponing her visit to U.S. troops abroad. In a letter to the Speaker, the president argued the trip is a public relations event and it would be better if she were in Washington negotiating to end the shutdown. President's decision to disclose a trip that a speaker is making to a war zone was completely and utterly irresponsible. 
Neither side has shown any readiness to compromise over border wall funding to end the shutdown. The stalemate is tough to hear for the 800,000 federal employees still not getting paid. Many have started relying on local food banks as they struggle to pay the bills. Meanwhile, UK head coach John Calipari is offering to help federal employees that are currently not receiving pay. Calipari and his wife Ellen donated to Re Reach Incorporated, which helps struggling people buy new homes. This isn't the first time Calipari has helped people in need. He and his wife worked together for the teaming up for Texas Telethon in September of 2017. Staying in the bluegrass this morning, education leaders from across the Commonwealth gathered in Lexington yesterday. They shared ideas on how to make Kentucky schools better with lawmakers. One big point many made during the meeting was the superintendents getting more power when it comes to firing teachers and hiring principals. Educational funding and the state's troubled pension system were also discussed during the two-hour informal meeting between legislators and school officials. We're really not going to be able to move forward significantly when it comes to education funding, transportation funding, uh, any other issue until we address the pension system, not only the pension system, uh, but also the Medicaid uh, issue. The bills regarding the hiring and firing were Senate Bill 8 and Senate Bill 3. Both were passed last week by the Senate and will now go to the House for a vote. Meanwhile, House Republicans want to know if a watchdog panel knew about the information in a former staffer's sealed deposition against former House Speaker Jeff Hoover. Our news partners at the Herald Leader report House Speaker David Osborne has questioned the Kentucky Legislative Ethics Commission. The group investigated the claims against Hoover and other state lawmakers about a year ago. In a statement to the paper, Speaker Osborne said they will wait to hear from the commission and make a safe working environment for all employees employees. In West Virginia now, Paul Hardesty is the new senator for the 7th District. West Virginia Governor Jim Justice appointed him yesterday. The seat was vacated by the resignation of Richard Ojeda. As a state senator, Hardesty will represent the district that covers all of Boone, Lincoln, Logan, and parts of Mingo and Wayne counties. In the November election, voters in Letcher County decided that it was time for change. Now, former Judge Executive Jim Ward was unseated by one of his magistrates, Terry Adams. Adams says he has both short and long-term goals, including securing a close to $2 million FEMA grant and completing the federal prison project. But he also has another cost-saving idea up his sleeve. It's a recycling, composting effort and it is substantially cost reduction to our sanitation department. Adam says he simply just wants to help Letcher County. Well, for days, some people in and around the Wayland area of Floyd County have gone without water. Crews with the area's water district tell us they were fixing a couple leaks last weekend, but a creek crossing water line was undermined late Sunday night, causing water outages for many. WIMT's Connor James followed up on this and has more on what's being done. This is the nearly 350 feet of new piping that's going to bring back water to several areas. Trees and debris has helped undermine uh, the line. We had a major problem. The elements took their toll on an old pipe nearly half a century old Sunday night near the Lackey community. We've been here ever since trying to drill in a new line under the creek slash river. Dean Hall, the Southern Water and Sewer District General Manager, says this has been no easy task. A lot of work. Uh, it's in rock. The old pipes crack and crews worked around the clock for nearly a week now in the cold temperatures. In the meantime, an emergency connection with Knott County's water helped many. Once, it, once the pipe gets across the creek, we'll work as long as it takes to get it back together. Originally 500 people were without water. Now it's down to 50. But water is still needed. We've had a lot of kids that need the water, like the bath because of school. That's where the Wayland Fire Department and local leaders have stepped in. And we've had a lot of elderly that's needed for their medicine or anything else they need. Patrick Lanham says they've seen many people in need. Everybody's appreciating that we're here to help in a time of need. 
as crews continue and try to fix the outdated piping. In Floyd County, Connor James, WYMT Mountain News. Now, if you're still without water in the area, the Wayland Fire Department says they open their doors around noon for people to come by and pick up some bottled water. Meanwhile, leaders in Martin County are looking for answers on how to fix the financial battle the Sheriff's Department is currently facing. Sheriff John Kirk says cutbacks of deputies, funds, and health insurance have created a nearly impossible environment for his department to function. As county leaders work towards a solution, the community is now stepping in to help. Everett Horn owns Horn's Fuel Stop. He says while the county takes on their financial woes, he wants to help. So he donated $1,000 to the to the department for gas for their vehicles, a move that he's hoping other businesses will get behind. I would challenge the other uh, business owners in the county to come up with something to help the situation with the sheriff's office also. The department says they are hoping issues can be resolved soon, even if that means involving the federal government in the near future. Well, coming up later on Mountain News this morning, we will take a look back at the snowstorm of 1994 as this week marks the 25th anniversary. Over the years, we've made all sorts of recipes together, but I think you'll be surprised by the unique ones that we're making today. Enjoy the relative quiet of today because we're on a weather roller coaster this weekend. I'll have more on what we can see in about three minutes.